Hey, Blender Bob here. Welcome to part two of this series on modeling for the VFX industry. So you've been using Blender, you saw a lot of tutorials, and you have all these plugins to do Booleans and crazy operations, and you can create very complex models. What you need to understand is that in a big shop, your model will travel from one software to another. It can go to Maya, it can go to Houdini, it can go to Mary, it can go to Substance Painter, to 3D Max, to Katana, it's gonna be rendered maybe in Renderman or Arnold or Guerrilla or whatever renderer. And you have to make sure that your model will properly transfer from one software to another. And it needs to be really well done and really clean geometry. And this is where I'm here to help you. So. You got your model, you go for your interview, and uh, you present your model, and it looks like this. And just like on America's Got Talent, you get the thank you but no thank you. So what does subdivision do? You would think it's gonna take the square and cut it in four, right? Well, it's not exactly how it works. What it's gonna do is to create a vertex in the center and connect the middle of the edges with that vertex. Catmull Clark will run the surface, but Simple will keep the original shape, just more subdivisions. And it works the same for the triangle and the end gun too, but we get a problem when we reach this surface. The problem is that it's concave, so when we try to subdivide it, we get a crappy result. It doesn't matter if you use Catmull Clark or Simple, it just doesn't work, look at this, it overlaps on top of each other. You give me a geometry like this, you're gonna do push-ups. Easy fix, triangulate the surface, then remove the extra edges and you get all quads. And you can also see that once it's subdivided, everything is a quad, there are no more end guns or triangles. There are good and bad triangles. For example, this one is a good triangle, because once you subdivide it, it keeps the same area and it doesn't distort. But this one here is very long and stretched, once you subdivide it, it becomes this. So the difference between this and this is just too big. If your model is not gonna get distorted, displaced, or sculpted, then triangles don't matter too much. So what have we here? A bunch of kid bashing parts and look at them, they look absolutely stunning. They are so beautiful. Don't ask me where I got them, I don't remember. Just Google kid bashing and I'm sure you will find them. The question is, can we use that stuff in production? Well, yes and no. It depends how close you are to them. If you see them from far away, then it's probably okay. I actually used the kit bashing parts on Predator 2 for the spaceship. I was working on a broken version of the ship and I put a lot of that junk inside and it looked really good. All right, now let's look at the wireframe. Look at this mess, triangles everywhere. It's a Boolean festival. Look at this thing here, it's completely ridiculous. Look at the amount of polys on that thing. Now you need to understand that these parts were not designed to be seen in close-up. If you want to use these parts in close-up, you would need to bevel everything, which would be very complicated considering the bad topology. And also we cannot smash them, twist them, destroy them, because this is what we do in the film industry. I created a simple rig inside this model, and you can see when I move the bones, it doesn't work at all, it creates a lot of artifacts, and it's not, you see, it's not good, it's unusable, and if you send this to a Houdini guy for some effects, he's just gonna send it back. Do it right, and if you give me a model like this, you're gonna do push-ups! Look at this, uh, it's a nightmare! Eventually I will make a clip to show you how you can clean up all that junk and make it usable as a hero model. I was surprised by this part, because it strangely looks like a bicycle pedal that I did a few months ago. If you take a close look, you can see that this model wasn't designed to be seen in close-up, because all the edges are really, really sharp. And if you try to subdivide it, well, it's not gonna work, because the geometry is not designed for that. You see, it just doesn't work at all. This is mine. You see, it's not even subdivided yet, but you can see all the little details on the edges here, the little bevels everywhere. This is what makes it realistic. You can see the holes here, they only have six sides, but once you subdivide the model, it looks perfect. Look at the tiny edge here, it's a little bit rounded. This is the kind of stuff you are looking for. Now, how does it distort? Let's check it out. Look at this, it just works perfectly. It bends, it twists, and everything, no problems, no artifacts. This is what is expected from a hero model. And also you could sculpt this geometry, no problems, it would work very well. It does have a few triangles here and there, but they are good triangles. Even if the model doesn't distort, you may want to use only quads. This is a good example. Here you have a big n-sided poly and it's concave. 
So if you bring this to Mary for texturing, it's not going to work because Mary doesn't support n-sided polys. So you could triangulate it and say, well, I'm going to give you a different version with, you know, a bunch of triangles in it. But in a big shop with 350 people, you cannot start doing custom models for the texture people. You need to publish your models, you have to go through sanity checks and a lot of... It's complicated. Just make it clean to begin with. Now for your Boolean lovers, if you think this is too complicated to be done in quads, I will show you how it's going to be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Just select your polygons, loop tool, circle, extrude, and you are done. Thank you, have a good day. And that's all I have to say about that. And that's it. Next clip, we're going to talk about bevels. Now you may think, bevels, what's to learn about bevels? I mean, it's really simple, you just put a bevel modifier or you use the bevel tool and just bevel, right? Well, it's not that simple. All right, so I'll see you in the next clip. Bye.